Oh, my friend. Guess who's back? Guess who's back? What it do, y'all? What up, 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 what up. Shout out to y'all. All right, y'all. I tried something a little bit different this time, y'all. We got about six different cameras up. Appreciate all the love from all the people that um sent me um ways to set this stuff up. I had no clue how to do this stuff, y'all. Uh, but with the help of y'all, y'all, y'all really hook you up. So shout out to all y'all. If I'm licking all over the place because we got quite a few cameras up in here right now. And I really don't know which camera to look at. That's just me being honest, y'all. <laughs> What's up, family? What does that mean? If I miss your question for any reason, right? Um, don't mind me. I'm, I'm, I got to get used to this platform. So let me just throw it off this real quick. Shout out to YouTube, Facebook, Rumble, Real, Instagram, TikTok, wherever you're watching me from. I hope you all have had an amazing Thursday or like um, the young folks said. I hope you all have had an amazing Friday, June. If you haven't been on my live streams before, I go by Zabo 103. I'm the dude that really get on these live platforms and information that you normally would pay for. If I know it, you getting it for free. It's really that simple, y'all. So the only thing that I would, would, would share with you as you're listening to my lives, think, research, and take action. Do those three things regardless of what you hear me say on this live. I want to make sure we're all on the same page. <laughs> because at the end of the day, the only person or people that care about you is you. Sure, there are some people in your family, your bloodline that care about all the things that you got going on. Sure, there are people that appreciate the time that you spend with them. But anybody outside of your bloodline, for the most part, y'all, they don't care. They just here to see the story. They're just here to watch for entertainment purposes. With that being said, let me just go ahead and make y'all aware, I am not a financial advisor and none of the stuff that I talk about is me giving you financial advice at all. But I do have to ask you a question. If you do have a financial advisor, is your financial advisor financially free? That's a real question. I'm financially free, boys and girls. <laughs> What's up, family? I'm not a wealth manager. Even though I worked at Bank of America for 20 years as an executive without a college degree, I'm not a wealth manager. And this is not how you build generational wealth. Keyword scam. <laughs> but ask yourself the question. What's up, family? If you have a wealth manager, has your wealth manager built wealth for themselves? I can tell you right now, if they're working at a company, for the most part, and it's not their own company, I can 100% assure you they haven't built any wealth for themselves. How do I know that? They're breaking the very first rule of building wealth. They're trading their time for money. And wealthy people don't trade time for money, boys and girls. They trade their money for time. I hope y'all picked that up. Look, a lot of people was trying to tap in with me yesterday at the livestock auction. When I got out there, y'all, we had no freaking service. We was in the middle of really nowhere. <laughs> I will tell you, I learned a lot. I did not purchase anything while I was out there, but it was really eye-opening. Not just being at the event, but seeing the amount of people 
that were out there bidding on livestock. It was unreal looking at this stuff, y'all. So I'm 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 saying that to say this, y'all. You bid it on that two and a half acres, shout out to that. It started at 10 grand. It was an auction. I tried to look at it on Facebook. I got I think I have to download Rodney uh the Facebook Messenger thing. I think that's what I gotta download in order to get those messages. Cause I was looking for messages, I'm like, I can't find it. <laughs> but it was unreal, y'all. So I'm I'm saying this to say, you know, I learned something different yesterday. And I realized that they have these livestock auctions all over the state. I'm sure they have them in every state. I'm almost certain they do. But they had them all over the states. And it's like, when I tell y'all, you know, I was thinking like, if I go and I get me a 900 pound cow, I'm just using it as an example. I'm thinking for myself, I'm going to spend probably about like 2,500 bucks, three grand, $160, $240. I mean, this stuff was dirt cheap, y'all. You, you couldn't even, I could make this stuff up if I wanted to. I just couldn't. It was unreal. Like I had never seen anything like this before in my life. I said, you telling me I could come get cow, goat, all these different things for a pair of joints? Y'all, it was crazy to me. So when I say things like, I don't know, I don't have to get on here and ask y'all for y'all money. I could just go to the livestock auction and process what I need to process. And when you go to Publix or when you go to Kroger's. Uh, whatever grocery store you go to to buy your meat is coming from somebody's land, I mean it. 100%. Think about this stuff, y'all. It was unreal. We got somebody here that's search free. Oh, they, they promote their they wig line, y'all. Somebody on my live promote their wig line. Shout out to that person. But it would have been nice if you said, what's up, family? So do that for me before you promote yourself. Say, what's up, family? Say, what's up to the family that's in here first before you just come in here and start promoting? Because if you just dive in and start promoting, ain't nobody going to buy that from you. They ain't going to buy that from you. So speak first. You don't walk in nobody's house and don't speak. You know, my kids be doing that sometimes. They come out their bedroom and they walk downstairs and they don't say that. I be like, who raised you? <laughs> you better speak. Wipe your feet off and speak before you do all that. And then talk about what you need to talk about. Don't just come in here and just that ain't how this work. You ain't you ain't pay your $25 for that pay how a license. You ain't do that. <laughs> y'all, I'm drawing just showing love, but back to what I was talking about for real, y'all. It was it was unreal, y'all. Unreal. And I'm going to tell you firsthand that that was probably one of the only times that I really felt out of place. And I'm, I didn't feel out of place because of the people, because the people were super nice. And they were educating me on stuff for free. It was unreal. I was out of place because I didn't even know where to start. I had no clue what to look for. Um, if I did bid on something, was I getting a good deal? Was I, because I was so excited, it was so cheap. I'm thinking, I paid $500 for one of these cows. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> but then the health look, how healthy these, it, it was just unreal. So I'm saying to myself, I'm going to go a couple of more times before I make any attempt to bid on anything because I want to learn some more stuff first unless the person that I'm with that I'm going with, you know, they've been doing it for, he said, since he was a young boy. How old is a young boy? What's a young boy? He said, since I was a young boy, I've been coming to these. And, you know, we've been, we've been doing this forever. I'm like, okay. 
So if he tell me, hey, this is a good deal, make it happen, then I'm gonna make it happen because I ain't got no choice. I don't know. I don't know no better. So I'm learning a lot of stuff, y'all. And I, I, I would encourage y'all to continue to do the same. Because what you're gonna find is, is that number one, you don't know everything, just like I don't know everything. There are some things you're gonna be a fish out of the water. It's just that simple. So you can't continue to depend on everything that you think you know and think that's going to make a difference in everything else when it comes to things you don't know. We were in um, uh, Franklin, Georgia. What's up, family? Franklin, Georgia. That's where we were. I ain't never even heard of Franklin, Georgia before. But they have livestock auctions in Sugarloaf. They have livestock auction in Macon. They have them in one of Roberts. They have them in Cartersville. They have them in Douglasville. They have them in, um, what was that place called? Milton. They had them in, I mean, they got them all over the place, y'all. I was like in shock. I was really in shock. It was unreal, y'all. Unreal. So, Shout out to that. Um, I um, I, I'm gonna tell y'all. I'm I'm still in awe because of, and I'm normally like this when I go to different things that I ain't never done before and ain't never did. I'm normally like this because I'm just like, I ain't know this stuff exists. I had no clue. The other thing um, that was interesting to me. I know a lot of people celebrated, uh, what was it? Uh, Valentine's Day yesterday. Right? Happy Side Chick Day today. <laughs> if you haven't figured out, that's what today is. And if your significant other was busy yesterday, you the side chick or the side dude. But I know a lot of people celebrated this, this, this holiday. And it made me start thinking, y'all. Because I didn't even realize it was Valentine's Day until late that afternoon. And me and my wife, we're so much alike, it don't even make sense. We be on the same page with stuff, which is interesting. So as I'm coming back from the uh, livestock auction, um, I'm on my way home. I make the call, check like I normally would check, see what you know what they got going on, and I realize, oh crap, it's Valentine's Day. I gotta get something, don't I? Ain't that what they tell us? I gotta consume something. So I did the impossible, y'all. I stopped by, picked up some flowers, and I will never buy no flowers, y'all. I don't believe in that. They're going to leave the planet too, y'all. But I stopped and bought some flowers. I brought them in the house, gave the flowers up. I was a consumer. My wife said, what's this for? I said, for Valentine's Day. She was like, boy, if you don't go sit down somewhere, go sit down somewhere. And in that moment, I couldn't do that but laugh. But at the same time that I was laughing, I said to myself, that means something else is already being shipped or she about to go buy something and she just ain't said it yet. Now, I'm going to tell y'all flat out. I found out today what that something is. And I'm not going to tell y'all what that something is. What I'm going to do is, today is Thursday. Saturday or Monday, I'm not sure which day it's going to actually be. Saturday or Monday, I'm going to go live in this place where I know my wife didn't spend some money because I just looked at the account. <laughs> and I'm going to show y'all why she ain't care about no flowers. I ain't going to tell you. Uh-uh. Y'all ain't going to know yet. I'm just going to show you. 
Because a lot of times when people just say things, people are like, mm, whatever. But when you show them in real time, you can't refute it. There is no he capping. So I'm just gonna show y'all. So Saturday, I'm gonna I'm gonna pop up on live. If y'all see me pop up on live midday, every day is Valentine's Day. I'm learning that stuff the hard way. <laughs> but I'm gonna pop up on live on Saturday. And I'm gonna show y'all what my wife bought on why she ain't care nothing about no flowers. She don't really eat chocolate. You know, my wife be on that little health kick. She don't be, she don't eat a lot of sweets no more. But that's a whole nother album. I went there and get no reception, family. So I wasn't able to go live like that. But every day, y'all. So look, y'all. <coughs> Enough about me. Enough about what's up, family. Enough about all that stuff. Let's dig into what we really need to be talking about today. And that is you have the right. What's up, family? To be you. You have the right to be you. What does that really mean? It means whatever it is you want to be, just be it. And that's just all it is to it, y'all. It ain't overly complicated. It ain't, it ain't something that's going to, uh, you got to go back and go into thinking for the next 24 years. No, just be you. All these other things, it don't even matter. You don't have to be like this person that person. Just be you. It's hard enough just being yourself. There's a lane for you to accomplish what you want to accomplish without all the trickery. Imagine that. Imagine for one second, what's up family? If you took the time to be yourself, right? Your life would be so interesting that it wouldn't even make sense. I don't think people understand that. And when your life becomes interesting, what does that mean? You have a story to tell. And if you have a story to tell, guess what that means? You are guarding attention from people. And as we all know, attention is the new currency. Don't ever be fooled by what you believe to be true other than you have the power to be you. Let me give some examples for those people that don't understand. If you're the greatest person in the world, be the greatest person in the world. If you ain't, then you ain't, just be ain't. <laughs> There's a lane for all of that. Everybody has a gift. Everybody has a talent. 99% of the planet don't use their gift or their talent, ever. They have their gift or their talent their whole life, and they'll leave this planet before they use it. Think about what I just said. You don't have to be the top salesman or saleswoman in the world to be successful. You don't have to be the best basketball player, the best actor, actresses. You don't have to be any of that. It was amazing. Thing. You just need to be you. Use the talent that you have. Whatever it is that you do that you don't get paid for and you do it all the time anyway, that's probably your talent. I'm going to say that again. Whatever you do that's currently not earning you money and you do it all the time anyway, that's probably your talent. Whatever it may be. So that means that if you are a person that's just strolling on social media all day, maybe you have an eye for possibly starting something like your own social media platform. It's not that complicated, y'all. Not like you think. It don't cost you that much of an arm and a leg to do it either. 
Think about that. You like to sit and gossip all day. You gossiping all day long. And that's all you're doing. Start your blog gossiping. You're doing it anyway. You like to be on a video game? Man, you better start streaming and start making money. They got all type of streaming platforms for you to make money. That's the truth. You like going and shopping. I know ladies like this. You like shopping all the time. You think you can be a personal shopper for people? Come on now. You like cheaping. That's what you do every day, all day. Not only you ain't making no money from cheaping. Hold on a second, y'all. Not only are you not making no money for cheaping, you spending money. You know how informative you can be to the world by educating people on all the different things you cheat? Come on, y'all. Social media has put us in a position to where you can make money doing anything. And for a regular business owner who's in business, right? Social media is free marketing. You know, back in my day, when there was really no social media, you had to have a brick and mortar, or was how many people could you physically get in contact with in order to sell them stuff? Did you have enough money back then to put money on billboards? Think about that for a second. That's definitely an idea. Think about that for a second, y'all. Did you have money to get on commercials, on radio. Social media has, them lines have been completely erased because you're open up to the world. So if you know how to make candles, start making candles, make it a business. You know how to make soap, start making soap, make it a business. Whatever it is that you do, do you. There's a lane for everybody, y'all. Think about that for a second. Churches and funeral homes, they'll buy all your candles in bulk. Come on, y'all. What am I saying? I'm saying be you. What's up, family? Be you. It ain't nobody else out on this planet just like you. Nobody. Think about how many different people you had to outswim to get here. I'm going to say that again because I probably went over a few people's head. I'm going to say that again. Think about how many people you had to outswim to get here. Uh-oh. Uh oh. <laughs> and you made it. You could have been a tree. You could have been a rock. You know how lucky you are to be here on this planet? You could have messed around to be the crust in some of y'all eyes. You a whole person. You got to be the luckiest person on this planet. There is about 8 billion people on this planet. And you're one of 8 billion. Forget the other trillion that they make it. <laughs> What am I saying, boys and girls? Use your talent before it's too late. Use your talent before it's too late. One of the things that I learn, and I'm learning still every single day, I have a gift of following direction, 
That includes executing. And I have a gift of once I got the direction down pat, trans, I have a gift of translating it to other people to influence them to do the same thing. I know that's a gift. That's the only way I was able to become an executive at Bank of America without a college degree. That's just the truth. That's the only way I'm able to run a multi-million dollar company by influencing other people because I learn very quickly how to follow direction and execute them and translate it to people so that they can do the same. Think about what I just shared. I know that everybody don't have that gift. It just is what it is. Some people, you put them in a wet paper bag, they won't be able to find their way out. <laughs> if y'all ain't figured out yet, <coughs> excuse me, I'm in a silly mood. And I'm in a silly mood because for me, y'all, I'm going I'm to I'm I'm try to be a, a little bit more serious right now. For me, I understand how precious time is, y'all. And y'all didn't heard me say it a million times on these live platforms. Y'all, we're not going to be here forever. We're just not. There's no way humanly possible we're going to be here forever. And being that we're not going to be here forever, we got to make the best out of this stuff, y'all. Laugh. Have fun. Enjoy the people that you are spending your time with. Stop taking people for granted. And when... You do meet people. Don't be looking for the opportunity to catch them. Or don't be thinking that they're looking for the opportunity to catch you. Just be a good person, y'all. Because time waits for no one. And we all going to run out of time, y'all. So today, Friday, Junior, let me say this. If you haven't taken the steps to start your journey on whatever it is that you really tell yourself that you really want to do, make today today. I'm not talking about make it tomorrow morning when you wake up. I'm talking about make it right now. That's what you need to do. Start taking steps to get closer to whatever it is you're dreaming about. You want to start the business? Go on and make sure the paperwork part of your business is set up right. Go on and get your business registered, get your EIN number, get your domain, get your business bank account. You got a little bit extra money left over. Whatever you're going to be doing business as, go get it, start the process to get it trademarked. You got some type of logo or imagery that you want to do, get that trade. Start the process to get just to get that right. Even before you start conducting business. Think about that. Just start taking steps. Because I promise you, take one step every single day. You know how many things you're going to accomplish by doing that? In six months, not only will you have a business, your business should be up and running by the end if you're taking a step every day. Think about that for a second. This is how this stuff works. You said, I have $3,000 and my credit is bad. What should you do with what? The $3,000? The first thing that you should do with the $3,000 and bad credit, step number one, want you to take notes. Here's the first step. And your name is, all right, cool. Stop telling people that you got $3,000 and you don't know what to do with it because somebody is going to come and get it. Don't tell nobody how much money you got, especially if you don't know what to do with it. They will show you what to do with it, and it will be. 
taking your money, putting it in their account, and telling you you didn't follow the process. That's the truth. All right? The second step is this. If you have bad credit, fix your credit. Fix your credit. It's not complicated. It's not hard. Okay. Let's go ahead and meet the quota real quick. Take notes. Reach out to Lexus Nexus family. Lexus Nexus. I can't reach all the way up there on that platform. This platform, I can just click the button and it pop up. So it's up over here. This platform, I can't really do nothing about it. Somebody put Lexus Nexus in the chat. There we go. Lexus Nexus. Goat the goat just put it up. Lexus Nexus. Lexus Nexus. <coughs> Let that sink in. Contact Lexus Nexus. Right? When you contact Lexus Nexus, Lexus Nexus houses all your information, all of it. The very first person you get on the phone, this is what you tell them: freeze my Clue report and my personal file. Clue, C L U E, and personal file. Hope you caught that. They're gonna try to upsell you on some extra privacy, you don't need it. Tell them politely, no thank you, just freeze my clue report and my personal file. They're gonna send you out a PIN number. They're gonna tell you, you can unfreeze and freeze your clue report and your personal file at any time. Give it a day or two, just to make sure it's frozen. And then reach out to Equifax, TransUnion, and Experian and start disputing. This is not my account. Verify this balance. Verify this late. I don't know what this account is. Whatever it is, start disputing. A lot of people don't know that when you dispute on your credit report, they got 30 days to verify your information. A lot of people don't know that, which is interesting. Even less people know that when they go verify your information, they're reaching out to LexisNexis to verify your information. Uh-oh. And being that they're reaching out to LexisNexis, that's who they call it, even less people know that being that your clue report and your personal file is frozen, nothing's coming back. And we all know what happens when you dispute something and nothing comes back. It's coming off your credit. Congratulations, you have fixed your credit. And if I haven't mentioned it already, it's free. So the $3,000 that you have currently right now, if you're thinking about starting a business, go register business with the Secretary of State. Once you register your business with the Secretary of State, I think most states are like a hundred bucks to register business with the Secretary of State. California is the most expensive at 800 bucks. You're going to be able to business expense that joint back out. Don't worry about it. Go get your free EIN number. Go to GoDaddy.com and go get you a domain. That's for your website and emails and stuff like that. It's about $9 a year. Unless you buy the upgrade your stuff, you might spend $40 for the year. Right? And then whatever you have left over on that $3,000, go open you up a business checking account. Congratulations, you're in business. Now your credit's fixed. Now you're in business. Think about that for a second. You say name cheap has cheaper domains? I ain't never heard of them before. You have to look, in, have to look into them and see what they're about. But $9, $9 ain't that much. <laughs> it's okay. If you got excellent credit and you broke, that's okay too. It's okay. Because you're not really broke. You're in between blessings. Think about that for a second. Think about how much of a mind shift that is 
when you say I'm broke versus saying I'm in between blessings. It's a complete mind shift. Okay, okay. Let me say it this way. Right? Every year by December 31st, every bank account, I don't care if it's the trust bank account, I don't care if it's the business checking account, it's going to zero by December 31st. One would say, if it's going to zero, that would make you broke. No, I'm just in between blessing. Because on January the 1st and January the 2nd and January the 3rd, guess what's happening? I'm still conducting business. Money's going to come right back in. I'm going back to go like I'm playing Monopoly. And we're going to continue going around the board with the money that we're generating out the business expenses and taxes. And every piece of land that we land on that we can afford, we buy it. Think about what I just said. So I might do something like I'm about to do in the next 28 days from now. I might spend $1.3 million. That's what we're about to spend in the next 28 days. On 1,157 acres of land, I had to get that money out of the account. Why? Because the FDIC only insures in the bank up to $250,000. So if the bank go under for any reason, they're going to give me that two fifty dollars and write me an IOU for the rest. I can't keep that type of money in the bank. Think about what I just said, y'all. So when I pay for this land, I'm going to be in between blessings. You get it? Think about that. I'm going to be in between blessings. And then every day, as the businesses generate money, the business is going to have business expenses, and the business is going to have what? Taxes. Right? After those two things are covered, a percentage of the money is going to go into the trust checking account because the trust got to pay the trust bills because I ain't got no bills. Wink, wink. The rest of that money is doing what? It's still going to zero buying land. So we'll keep walking around this planet and every piece of land that we land on that we can afford, we buy it. What's up, family? Think about what I'm saying, y'all. Now, those are the things that I do. You don't have to do that. Your theory may be a little bit different. Hey, I can't do all that right now. I got to go to work Monday. When you get to work on Monday, you're going to work until you get paid. And then when you get paid, what you going to do? You're going to pay some bills. You got some money left over. Here's why I would say you can do what I'm doing at the level you at as much as you can afford. What does that mean? You're going to work every single day. When you get paid, your money needs to be going to three places. Basic living expenses, a.k.a. your bills. The money that's left over, a percentage need to go into the what? That whole life insurance policy because you're going to leave this planet and you need to leave the people that you say you love the most something behind. The rest of that money, you might not be able to afford to go buy land with the rest of the money left over from your check, but you can put that money to the side every pay period till you build up enough money to do what? Buy land. Think about that. <clears throat> How do you make money from buying land? Easy. If unlimited ways to make money off of land. You just got to really pick one or pick a few or pick a lot of them, right? So think of it this way. Land is the only thing on this planet that I've seen that only goes up in value and don't go up and down. 
Watch this. So if I go buy a piece of land today for $10,000, regardless of what happens, say I don't do nothing with the land, the only thing that's going to happen with that land is only going to go up in value. I ain't got to worry about it going up and down. It's only going up. So you're making money that way just by having it. So that's better than putting your money in a savings account. That's better than putting your money in an IRA or a Roth or in the stock market. It's way better than all that because it's guaranteed to give you a return on your investment. That's number one. Let me see something real quick. Hold on a second, y'all. Why is this phone doing this? I don't know why it's doing that. All right. Think about that for a second. That's just one way. Now, a lot of people, when they think about land, they're thinking about things like, I got to build me a single family home to get me some rental properties. I got to get me a gas station over here, even though you don't make no money off the gas. Man, I got to get me a shopping center. I got to have me some commercial buildings. Those are the only ways that most people know to make money off the of land. You know how much money people pay to go hunt? I think people miss that opportunity because they're not thinking that way. And I get it. 100% I get it. Right? Like, hunting is big money. I mean, big money. Think about that for a second. Let's keep going. This right here that I got on my back, what you got on your back, what she got on her back, what he got on his back. You know how much money you make off of this, off of your land? I don't think people get it. But that's another conversation for another day. Do you like pecans? Do you like pecans? I love pecans. Not because I eat them, because they make an amazing amount of money. Pecan trees make an amazing amount of money. People don't have no idea. They have no clue. We planted 100 acres of pecan trees. We're about to get ready to get our third check in a few months. We have a country with a whole nother country. Uh-oh. They buy for the shell and the oil. People ain't got a clue. People don't have a clue. I'm learning right now, and I'm going through the process of striking up a contract with a major cell phone company right now as we speak so that they can lease the land, my land, to put their cell phone towers on. Ooh, y'all don't have a clue. Did you know if you got timber on your land, the timber company will pay you $4,000 an acre for your timber? I can keep going. You know how much money people pay you to have a solo panel farm on your land? Oh, oh. Don't get me to start it if you want to get back into commercial and you just so happen to lease your land out to Walmart and get that lifetime lease. Y'all, it ain't nothing on this planet that's going to outperform the things that I'm talking about. That was scary, y'all. People don't have a clue. I have people that say things to me all the time about the stock market and I always tell them the same thing. You pay a mortgage, you pay rent, it's on somebody's land. No, nope, it ain't on nobody's land, it's on my land, I own my home. You got the title? You own that property free and clear? Nope, I got a mortgage. You don't own that, that property or that land, the bank own it. You're renting to own, don't ever get it twisted. It sounds good. But it ain't the truth. 
Man, nope, stock market way better than land. Okay, okay, use your money from the stock market and feed yourself. How do you like your omelet? Where do you think them eggs came from? Somebody land. Where do you think that filet mignon wrapped in bacon came from? Somebody land. All I'm saying is, y'all better figure this stuff out. Don't be silly. Don't be silly. And please, for the life of me, I'm going to say this out loud. Don't listen to these people that just be throwing out random stuff, y'all. You buying that land, you're going to get taxed like crazy. No, you not. If you know what you're doing. All these things cost overhead? Really? Okay. Enlighten us. Let's talk about how much all these things cost. Y'all already know where we're going. So for my people that are on these other platforms, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'll read out the the, the response. But I can I ask you a question, family? All these things cost overhead. I can't really see your name. Let me ask you a question. How much land do you own today? How much land do you own today? And I'm only asking that question because you said all these things cost overhead. I want to quantify how much land you own today so we can talk through how much the over co overhead costs cost. I just want to know. You own two acres of land? That's amazing, family. How much is the cost, the overhead cost for two acres of land? How much is the overhead cost for two acres of land? I'm just curious. Property taxes, 100%. How much is the property taxes? I, I, I'm happy I got you thinking, family, because thinking is important. This overhead is going to kill you, and we have to have a different conversation for two acres of land. You inherit the land. Okay, maybe I didn't ask the right question. Let me ask the question again. How much is the overhead cost for two acres of land? What's up, family? Yeah, we talked about that piece for a little bit for the uh, livestock auction that we went to yesterday. I'll circle back to it because I know we got a lot of new people popped in here. Um, the 41 and a half acres of land we just purchased, that one came with the mineral rights. But I don't really, I don't really dig into it too much. Um, it's something on my list right now to talk through with uh, this close friend to the family because he knows a lot about it. Um, I'm trying to get more clarity on a couple of things to see how that makes sense. But yeah, once I get all that information, I'll definitely be um, be talking through it. You pay four thousand dollars a year, four k in taxes a year, but I don't want much. Okay, that's cool. So this 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 right here, family. Hopefully, it, we can we can learn together. Right. So think about this for a second. And I'm sure it sounds like if you're paying four thousand dollars a year on two acres of land that you inherited. Either there's a nice sized property on that on that on that two acres. And if there's nothing on it, it's probably real close to the city, which means eminent domain probably about to get ready to hit you. And that's cool, too. But I want you to think for a second. Right. And this is the reason reason why I say no, no disrespect to you because you was a good sport and I appreciate you for real. But anytime you start sharing stuff about whatever it is, 
you got to have a good understanding of it. And the reason why I say you got to have a good understanding of it is because people will throw things out that realistically, they may not be true. It may just be something that they heard. And that's a scary thought. So let me give you an example of what I mean. Two acres of land, 4K for property taxes. That means you need to be conducting business on that so it can pay it. That's just what it is. I can tell you from experience, me and my wife bought 41 and a half acres of land cash four months ago on live on TikTok. I want y'all to, I'm going to keep saying this because I want it to hit home for folks. The property taxes on the 41 and a half acres of land is $60 a year. Six, zero. I'm going to say it again for the people in the back. The property taxes on the 41 and a half acres of land is $60 a year. What over here? Most people don't understand that. Before you say not in California, remember what I just shared with you. You only know as much as you know. There are things that you don't understand at this point because you only went to a certain place. And that's no shade. That's no disrespect. It simply is you only know what you know. It's a real big world out here. It's a lot of things that you might not know and you ain't never even heard of before in your life. So before you make the statement of not in California, let's look at some stipulations. A lot of people, when they buy land, they buy land less than 10 acres. A lot of people do. And in most states, if you're buying less than 10 acres, for the most part, you can't quite really get the true benefit that will give you things like tax breaks. It's just a thought. Now, I think in California, if you bought land in California, less than more than 10 acres of land, because I think in California it's 10 acres minimally, and it just happened to be agriculture and you happen to build your home on it. You can put your land in conservation. Uh-oh. Having your land in conservation gives you an amazing tax break. That's just one way, right? Now, we know what happens when you put livestock on your land. We understand this. We know this firsthand. We know there's a significant tax break. What we don't really pay attention to Depending on what type of animal you have, you have to have a certain amount of acreage. So if you got a large animal, I know in the state of Georgia, but every one large animal that you have, you have to have one acre per large animal. I hope you're picking this up. Most people don't get that. Well, let's go a step farther. I think, and I could be wrong, you might need to walk through the process, especially if you're spending $4,000 a year on property tax for two acres. You might need to go down there to planning and zoning. Just talk to anybody down there. And just ask them very, very nicely and quickly, hey, I'm thinking about putting a small little burial site on my, on my land. Can you walk me through the process? And they'll walk you through it for free. Once that barrier site is on your land, guess how much your property taxes is? Zero. Uh-oh. Think. As a person that owns 242 and a half acres of land, and in the next 27 days, we're going to add 1,157 acres of land on to that number, we'll be right up on the 1,500 acres of land that we own. I'm not speaking from a place of, I think. I'm talking about what I do. So what I would say is, start digging into some of the benefits that you get out of land because you can make a ton of money. And if you're in California, 
and you got two acres of land, what would it cost out in California for you to start your own dispensary out there? Probably gonna cost too much, right? What about if you were just the person that was growing it? Since it's legal out there, it's just a thought. You can put that into action on two acres for sure. It's definitely a big business out there. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't cheat, so I don't know. What I'm saying is when people are asking, how do you make money off land? It's an unlimited amount of ways you make money off of land. Unlimited. But let's just say you wanted to go with the old simple way and build you some little uh, modern duplex on every quarter acre. You can easily, uh-oh, I got to charge this phone on Instagram. You can easily build you four modern duplexes on a quarter acre, hundreds of thousand plus fees. Here's what I would say to your family. A lot of people think they lack capital and they lack money. That's what they think they lack. You don't lack money to get things done. You lack information and taking action with it. I heard this and I could be wrong. It's just me. I heard, wait, 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 wait. If you have some form of a felony or conviction in that field of cheating, I heard you get some special privileges on getting that stuff done without, without all the extensive fees or the extensive costs. What does that mean? I might not have a felony. I might not have been caught up in that situation because I was straight and narrow. But I may know somebody that, that has been that I care about and love and we sure can partner together to make this stuff happen. Think. Think. I ain't in that field. I don't know nothing about it. But I'm telling you, no matter what it is you're trying to do, you don't lack money, y'all. You lack information. And take your action with the information that you're getting. So when I sit back sometimes and I say to myself, man, I'm not college educated. I barely got a high school diploma. Or I sit back and say, man, I worked at Bank of America for 20 years as an executive without a college degree. Made a couple hundred grand a year. Yeah. That's, congratulations, you ain't got no felonies. That's a blessing. Do you know anyone that got a felony? Or you don't know nobody that got a felony? <laughs> ain't nobody in your family got a felony? No one? Think about what I'm saying. I ain't got no felonies either. But I got family members that got felonies. And I know they qualify for a lot of the programs. A lot of them. You'd be surprised. And don't you want to help your family member get on their straight and narrow? Well, all right. Well, family, I didn't gave you a lot of the time on this live platform to help share and open your mind. Hopefully, hopefully, you think about what you heard. Do a little bit of research. Do some more thinking. You're pretty sharp. I can tell. You're going to figure something out. You're going to figure something out. So what am I saying, boys and girls? Don't be afraid to be you. Being you is going to put you in the best position. Being you is going to put you in the best position 
that it ever can put you in. We're programmed. So for from what I've heard, because I don't know much know much about it, because that's not a field that I'm interested in. <laughs> but I, I heard if you have a felony uh, with the cheaping thing, if you have a felony in that area, I heard that um, there's a couple of programs that they offer to those individuals first without all the extensive fees and costs. You just got to dig into it. If that's the lane you in, just start digging into it. Because, I, again, I don't know nothing about it. I just overheard some people talking about it. And I thought it was pretty interesting. But for everybody, for everybody else, look, y'all. Today is the day that you take the first step. Like I said, I retired from the bank in my early 40s. I worked for my last name and not my first. Last year, I worked 57 hours. This year, I'm doing an amazing job of hitting my target on the amount of hours that I'm going to work for 2024. And the amount of hours that I worked for 2024 is zero. So far, I'm off to a great start. I'm just jumping on these social media platforms, and I'm going to keep giving this information. It just is what it is. So what I encourage you to do is to start taking your steps. Start taking your steps. Whatever it is you're trying to do, start taking steps. I promise y'all this stuff ain't complicated. I can't even make it up if I wanted to. I left Bank of America when I made my yearly salary in a month. And it was because I was taking steps. Think about what I'm saying. I realized very quickly when I left Bank of America, making my yearly salary in a month, I realized that I'm lazy. I wasn't going to downplay the facts that I was lazy. So what did I do? I started hiring people to do the work that I didn't want to do. And then I said to myself, I'm still working and I'm lazy. So I started hiring people to do all the work. It officially put me in the same position that I was in at Bank of America. It put me in a position to do what I was doing for my job for myself. Think about it. about that for a second so your dbas is just going to be your name of the company that you're actually going to come up with so let me give you an example of what i mean if you have an llc currently today you can use that llc and you can say your dba is goat to goat so you're going to create a website saying goat to goat you're doing business as goat to goat it don't have to be tagged nowhere and all this other stuff that's irrelevant when you file your taxes, your taxes is going to be off of your LLC if you obviously make $40,000 or less in that business. If you make more than $40,000, they're going to make you turn it to an escort. What you file your taxes on is going to be off of your business. Your DBA is something separate. Hopefully that makes sense. So your credit for your business is going to be off of your business, not your DBA. Not at all. So when you go apply for business credit, they're going to be looking for your business, whatever your business is called. So your business might be called 1234, but your DBA might be go to go. When you go file to go get credit for your business, it's going to be off of 1234. Hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully that makes sense. The next thing is that I want to I want to talk about. Like we, I had I had somebody that told me they they was like, look, can you go in a little bit further with this? I, and it's like I've been operating off of, um, I've been operating off of business trust personal. I heard you say something like you should be operating in private and public. Can you go a little bit more in depth with that because? I kind of get what you're saying, but I don't necessarily think I I, I get it because you always going to have something personal. So let me just say this. 
from a personal perspective, when you're conducting business, you're supposed to pay yourself a reasonable income. That's just what it is. Let me give you an example of what I mean. If your business is generating $100,000 a year, right? You got your trust going, you're doing what you're doing. And then you have your personal stuff, which are bills. If your bills are $40,000 a year, you can't pay yourself less than $40,000 a year. You really can't pay yourself less than 60. Because you got to account for the taxes and you got to be able to afford your bills because your bills will get paid. So if you made a hundred grand a year, your bills $40,000 and you tried to pay yourself $10,000 a year, you're going to get out of it. And the reason why I'm saying it is, is because you're instantly showing that you're not paying yourself a reasonable amount. Something is messed up somewhere because that 10 grand is not enough to afford to pay your 40 grand in bills. I hope y'all caught that. Unless you got a spouse that's covering the bills or something like that. Think about that for a second. The way I operate is a little bit different. I don't have bills. Hopefully you caught that. Being that I don't have bills, a reasonable income for me can be $6,000 a year, $5,000 a year, $12,000 a year. That can be a reasonable income no matter how much the businesses are making because I don't have no bills. You get it? Hopefully, hopefully that makes sense. So when I say I operate in public or private, those are the two entities that I operate in. If it's public, it goes in my business. If it's private, it goes in the trust. To buy under the business bank, yeah, you gotta have a, a you gotta have a business, an active business, in order to buy up under the up under your business bank. They're not gonna let you purchase that if it's not, especially from a credit perspective, if it's not active. If you paying cash for something, they not gonna care. You paying cash when you finance it, that's gonna be a little bit different. But going back to what I was sharing, <laughs> everything that I do is in two different entities, public or private. Roof over my head is private, so it goes in the trust. Anytime, family. Roof over somebody else's head that I got control over is public, so it goes in the business. Vehicles are public. They're not private, y'all. Vehicles are public. So being that vehicles are public, it goes in the business. Why do you make your big why do you make your vehicle public? If you get in a car accident and somebody get a glimpse that you got any type of money at all and they decide to sue you, you don't want them attacking your trust. You want them to attack your business because your business ain't never got no money. You get it? Remember, your business is going to zero by December 31st. Hopefully you caught that. So your business will purchase a business vehicle, plus you get benefits for having that business vehicle on your business. If you look at tax code 179, most years you just got to figure out what the new law is. They update it from time to time. Back in 2022, it was 100% right off of them. Meaning, if the vehicle weighed over 6,000 pounds and used 100% for business, you were able to write the full portion of it off through your business. Wow. In 2023, they turned it to 80%. Still an amazing benefit. So if you go purchase a vehicle for 100 grand that weighs over 6,000 pounds and it was used 100% for business, you can write $80,000 of it off. That's an amazing benefit to have. <laughs> so your vehicle is public. What other reason are you driving around anywhere if you're not conducting business? You have no other reason. 
You get it? If you look up the real meaning of your driver's license, you will know that the the, 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 the true meaning is you're driving cargo around. We're not going to get into that because I want to get to no trouble on these platforms. I hope y'all heard that though. So your vehicle is public. Food is public, boys and girls. What do you mean food is public? It's public. It's not private. Think about that. Your food is public. You went to the public to purchase it. If something go wrong, <coughs> as you're conducting business and you're buying your employees food, something happened to one of them, we have somebody to attack. The business is going to attack whatever company that they purchased the food from. What about when you get home and eat? You still an employee? I got 46 employees. Six of those 46 employees is me, my wife, and four of our six kids. They eat every single day. I'm going to go down in a second. I got you, though. Sit tight. Think about your job, y'all. If the morale go down at your job, what they do? Buy y'all pizza? Put some wings on it. <laughs> Get y'all a couple of Pepsis. And then they're expensive. Uh-oh. We got to make sure the morale don't go down in my businesses. All my employees going to eat every single day. And then we're going to expense it. Hope y'all caught that. Clothes, boys and girls. Now, most people you hear about clothes, you're thinking, that has to be private. Clothes is public, y'all. Imagine that. Hmm. Mm -mm -mm. Well, if it's a uniform, then yeah, that makes sense. You got business expenses for your uniform. I get it. Let me just tell you a smaller story, y'all. Y'all get on these live platforms and get this information from me for free. It's free to y'all. Well, it's really not free. Y'all get it for free. I get on here and show y'all my pretty clothes and my pretty shoes. And being that Zabo 103 is also a business, bling, bling. Business expense, business expense, business expense. Is the expense? I can keep going. Uh oh. Social media business doing business for content has opened it up like Wi Fi. What does that mean? I can go spend $800 on a pair of Alexander McQueen shoes. I can go spend $1,000 on a pair of Alexander McQueen pants. I can go spend $900 on an Alexander McQueen shirt. Because I'm doing it for content. Think. Amazing. Amazing. So it's public. What does that mean, boys and girls? Me and my beautiful wife no longer go on vacation. I know the lady's going to look at me kind of crazy. That. What do you mean you don't take your wife on no vacation? We don't go on vacation. We go on location. Always. This is how this stuff works. About three months ago, me and my wife went over to Turks and Caicos, a beautiful island of the UK. Ooh, it was amazing. Stayed in a nice, beautiful penthouse. 2,000 square foot penthouse. $15,000 a night. Had a butler. Had a chauffeur, had a concierge, and had security while we was over there. Had a camera crew following us around. We did some ATVing. 
some horseback ride, some jet ski. We did all type of stuff over there. But we was on a business trip. And you know you take your secretary on all the business trips. <laughs> I didn't say she was the secretary. I was the secretary. <laughs> Think. So what does that mean? What did the business pay for? The business paid for the flight, the food, the hotel, the camera crew, the ATV, the horseback ride, and all the pretty clothes and the pretty shoes you saw. Business. We was over there doing content, and we was over there buying land. And he's shopping it. Think. We were conducting business. We gonna conduct some more business pretty soon, y'all. We got a couple other business trip on the calendar right now popping up real soon, y'all. Think about it. Um, if you decide to do some form of an amendment on your taxes, I guess you could. Um, you would have to talk to a CPA though. Um, and knowing the CPAs that are out there right now, what's up, family? Knowing the CPAs that are out there right now, they may not advise it because you might stir up some stuff that you don't want to stir up. But you can do an amendment on your taxes, you could. Uh. <laughs> Hopefully y'all got that. Business, y'all. Public, private. What's up, family? Let's talk about this trust thing, y'all. Oh, it's all love, man. I ain't had no services, so I couldn't, I couldn't do the live on the livestock auction, but it was amazing. We, I'm going to talk about that in a second. I'm going to recap it because I know a lot of new people that popped in here. But let's talk about this trust thing. Look, y'all, your trust is private. Your business is public. You want everybody and your mama to know about the business because it's public. The trust is private. Hopefully y'all caught that. So you will hear people say things like, take your holding company, a.k.a. your business, and put it in your trust. and. At first, when I very first heard this, I'm like, let's see where they're going to go with this conversation. Because I, I always thought that the business was public. Why would I want to make it private? That don't make sense to me. At least that's what I used to tell myself, right? So then I started hearing things like, here's how you don't pay no taxes on your business or you personally. And I was like, this doesn't sound right. I'm a law-abiding citizen. Something sounds fishy here. <laughs> well, let me listen before I judge because I don't know everything. And what I started to hear, conceptually it made sense. But I had to start thinking like, are these people really doing this? Are they just telling people this so they can sell them a course? And then I said, I got to use common sense. Because when you use common sense, all the BS go out the window. So I'm going to walk through what, I was, what was explained to me, listening to these individuals say this, and I'm going to tell you my logic. I'm not 100% right. I would say consult your CPA for the best advice when it comes to your taxes. Consult an attorney that specializes in trust. Tell them your current situation. Tell them what you're trying to do in the future, and they'll be able to set up the perfect trust for you. Let me give that disclaimer out there from the very beginning. But this is what they said that had me scratching my head a little bit. They said, take your holding company, put it into your trust and when your business going to your trust the money that you're making you're only going to pay yourself 
5% or whatever you made. So an example, if you made $100,000, you're going to pay yourself $5,000. The other 95%, you're going to put into what? Your family living trust, and that way you don't have to pay taxes. And I said, the IRS going to hit them in the head, y'all. It's going to hit them in the head, but maybe they know something I don't know. But then I said, forget the IRS for a second. What's the meaning of paying taxes? You only pay taxes when you earn an income. If you don't earn an income, you don't pay taxes. So if you have to pay taxes, it's a byproduct of you making money or earning money. That's what they say. But then common sense got to kick in. Remember, your business is public, your trust is private. I started asking all type of questions. If I have a rental property in my business and my business is in my trust and one of my tenants want to go to war with me and start suing me and they get above my umbrella insurance of a million dollars and they started tapping into the other stuff, what are they going to attack? They're not going to attack my business. They're going to attack my trust. I don't want that. Now, there ain't too many judges that's going to pierce the level of the trust for them to attack it, but I don't even want to hit it. So why would I do that, right? That was a little bit of common sense for me that made me raise an eyebrow. <laughs> then I thought about the tax piece of it. If my business don't earn no income, that means my business don't pay taxes, right? If I don't earn no income, how am I going to get funding? Well, you're going to go to a financial institution to get funding. Financial institution, as a person that worked at Bank of America for 20 years as an executive without a college degree, the one thing that I learned while I was there, when you go to a financial institution to get funding, they look at two things. They look at your willingness to pay and they look at your ability to pay. Your willingness to pay is going to be your business credit or your personal credit. That's going to be your willingness to pay. Your ability to pay is going to be how much money that you earned. Wait, if I only earn 5% of what my business generated and the other 95% went to my family living in trust, and I didn't pay no taxes at all, that means I didn't earn no income. What happens when the bank see that you didn't earn no income? You don't get funding. Uh-oh, that sounds silly. But here's another thought. Let's say you made that honey grand on your business. And after you expensed everything down, you expensed it down to say $50,000. And that's what you paid yourself, but you got to pay taxes on that $50,000. You technically going to be somewhere around what, $16,000, $18,000 for taxes? That's a lot to pay in taxes. You barely can afford to pay your bills. When do you have to pay them taxes? Next year? Hopefully you caught that. Once next year roll around, you file your taxes, you file that you made 80 grand. You got good business credit and you earned $80,000. Would you believe if you went to the bank to go get funding off of what you made the previous year, the bank will loan you five to six times of what you earned in a form of a loan tax free? So if I earn $80,000, say minimally I get a loan from the bank for four hundred grand. The taxes I was supposed to pay was $16,000. When I get that loan for four hundred grand, because I got three years to pay them taxes, when I get the loan for four hundred grand, guess what I'm doing? Paying the $16,000 and using the remaining 
$384,000 for what? For my business to grow. Uh-oh. Well, that four hundred grand ain't taxed. The bank going to charge us some crazy interest rate. 50% interest rate. <laughs> that 50% ain't tax either. In fact, that 50% you're getting right off. So if I go get $400,000, I can turn that $400,000 to a million dollars easy. Uh-oh. That $400,000 ain't taxed. The $200,000 in interest I get to write off. So $600,000 of that million dollars, I ain't got to worry about. So out of that million dollars, what did I do? I took that million dollars, four hundred or six hundred thousand dollars, paid back the loan. The other four hundred thousand dollars is tax, right? I'm gonna have business expenses, so it ain't gonna be four hundred thousand I earn. The business expenses is gonna make me do what? Skin it down to somewhere around about two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Now I got taxes on two hundred fifty grand. I pay my bank loan off. The taxes on that 250 grand gonna be somewhere around like $90,000. It don't matter. We gotta pay $90,000 out of that $250,000 that went even my money that I made off of it. What we gonna do? Pay our taxes? And then next year, when it's time to pay the taxes, we gonna take that quarter million dollars and we gonna go get another bank loan five times to what we earn. $1.25 million at the gate. What people be talking about when they're talking about taking their business, putting in their trust, what they really be meaning, but they can't say this because then they'll be exposed. They're talking about having a foundation. The reason why you don't hear people saying, I got my business and I got a foundation versus a business trust because they can't afford it. To set up a proper foundation, the proper way, you gonna spend anywhere from sixty to a hundred thousand dollar properly setting it up. When your business is giving the money to the foundation, none of it's touched. That's what they be trying to do with these business trusts. They only gonna get in trouble, y'all. Think. So what I tell people is. Don't put the cart before the horse. You ain't making that type of money anyway in your business to be worried about no taxes. You just coming up with great talking points. And it sounds good to somebody that don't know. But the reality of it is, if you just go out and focus on making money, who cares about the taxes? Your business is going to have business expenses. And you're going to have as much business business as your business need. And whatever you owe in taxes, you're going to pay. Because that's how you get funded, boys and girls. This is how business is grown. Your business can't grow if you're not paying taxes because you're not earning no money. You're going to make that same little $100,000 every single year until one year you have a bad year. And that hundred thousand dollar ain't sustaining you. And now, guess what? You got to go back to somebody's job working for somebody else last day, and not your own. That's the truth. But nobody hears that. I'm just a dude on the internet talking. <laughs> now I know that was a direct me. and I know I went all the way around the world to answer that question. But I wanted to make sure you had it. I wanted to make sure it made sense to you. Because the reality of it is, y'all, majority of the people that you're here talking about this stuff, they not even doing the stuff they're telling you to do. And that's what's scary. That's the part that is very scary. They're giving you information knowing they don't have to live with the results. So what I tell people flat out every single day is, do your research. A lot of times when people say things, they ain't never done this stuff before in their life. They talk about something they didn't hear. You good, baby. And I like to say, hey, if, what's up, family? 
if I'm sharing something about something, it's only stuff that I'm doing. And I try to stay in my lane because I don't know everything. I don't know everything at all. I can't, I ain't gonna claim that person. I'm, I'm, I'm smart in spots and I stay in those spots. <laughs> all this other stuff don't even matter. So think, y'all. Research. Take action. It's the secret to everything you're trying to do in life. These people on social media, I can assure you, they're not giving it like that. You will be amazed how many people you see on social media telling you to do something, acting like they got this elaborate lifestyle, and every time they get on a live platform or they doing a podcast, they're on somebody, they're in somebody studio, you'll never see them at the house. And if they ever at the crib on live, it's looking at the ceiling. Think about what I just said. It's looking at somebody's ceiling. It's rare that you see people showing you these things in real time. These people go out and rent Rolls Royces. They go out and rent Lamborghinis. They go out and rent these Airbnbs just to get content to y'all so y'all can buy these products. I'm going to say it again. I know I heard some feelings the last time I said it. And I don't mean no disrespect, nobody. I don't mean no disrespect, y'all. I didn't bought every course you can think of. Ain't none of them worked. You didn't bought every course you can think of. Ain't none of them worked. <laughs> None of them work, boys and girls. None of them. You still trying to figure out if I if I short this stock or I make a call, you still trying to figure out do I call these people and talk to them about me taking over their property so I can wholesale this property? Do I go bird to all these properties? Man, if I go out here and buy these used vending machines, it's going to be easy to get these contracts to put them in these stores. You didn't buy every course you thought about, and ain't none of them work. You still got to work a regular nine to five, or you still got to struggle on your business. Ain't none of them work. None of them. And that's the truth. And the reason why they haven't worked the reason why they haven't worked, because they're not even working for the people that are selling you the course. They're not making their money off of what they're telling you to do. They're making their money off of you and selling you the course. I'm just saying, y'all. Take it for somebody that did it. Take it for somebody else. Take it for somebody else that did it. I can't tell you how much money we didn't spend in courses. I can go upstairs right now to the library and you can look at all them courses over there. Take it, it's collecting dust. And before somebody asks me, what's three good books to read? None. Ain't none of them good to read. I be having people tell, have you read The 48 Laws to Power? Have you read Rich Dad, Poor Dad? Shout out to all those authors too, by the way. Don't shade them now. Y'all done read all these books and you're still in the same position. The 48 Laws of Power didn't put you in the right position. It didn't teach you what you need to be doing so you can get out of your rat race. <laughs> Think, y'all. Rich Dad, Poor Dad was supposed to set everybody on fire to make everybody become rich. Y'all, it ain't real. None of this stuff is real, y'all. None of it. Books are a glimpse in time. It's a glimpse in time on a person's opinion about what they feel works. You want to know the best book to read? On this whole entire planet, y'all get a pen. I'm going to tell y'all, you don't need three books. You need one book to read. I'm about to give you a book to read right now. Take, I want y'all to get y'all pen and paper. 
I want y'all to get these pen and paper. Y'all ready? All right, put a one in the chat if y'all ready to get this, this, this book. It's a powerful book. I don't want to repeat it. I'm only going to say it once. Y'all ready? All right. If you ain't ready, here we go. The book title is called Your Brain. The book title is called Your Brain. The author of the book is a person by the name of you. I'm going to say it one more time for the people in the back. The name of the book is called Your Brain. The author of the book is a person by the name of you. I don't think y'all hear me. No, it ain't on Amazon. You got access to the book right now. I'm going to tell you how to purchase the book. Close your eyes and dream. You got access to the book right now. It's a beautiful book, y'all. Okay, okay, okay. People don't hear me. Let me explain. Let me explain. What I love to do and what you love to do might be different. So whatever you dream about doing and what I dream about doing is very different. Very different. Appreciate you. Very different. If you can just sit back for 30 minutes, when you get off this line, I want y'all to do this and we're going to wrap up with this. When you get off this line, for the next 30 minutes, for the next 30 minutes, and just dream and think about what you would be doing if you had all the money and all the resources in the world. Whatever it is, it don't matter how crazy it is, it don't matter how extravagant, it don't matter what it is, whatever it is, I want you to dream big and I want you to dream wild. So that means you're going to be traveling 365 days a year and you ain't got to worry about no bills, you ain't got to worry about no money, then that's your dream. If you're on somebody's island, not even somebody's island, if you on your own island, sitting on your own island, sipping on whatever you sipping on, because you ain't got to worry about no money, that's what you're doing. I want you to dream so big till it scares you. Think about that for a second. After doing this for 30 minutes, here's what I want you to do. I want you to think about what would I have to do in order to make these things happen? That needs to be your next question. What would I need to do to make these things happen? Right? Okay. Once you identify the things you need to do in order to make things happen, that's when your research starts. How do I do this? As you are seeing how you make all these things happen in your research, it's going to be directing you to people, not to pay for anything, or talking about people that's going to give you information for free. It's going to direct you, hopefully, to the library to go into those non-fictional section books to research how to do these things that's going to make your dream happen. Once your research is complete, you just got to take action. And every single week, you're doing the same thing. I'm thinking about all the stuff I accomplished. I'm researching the things that didn't work and how to make it work. And then I'm taking action and getting it done. And I'm going to keep doing that every week until I get to that dream. 
the book is in your head. Because your dream is different from my dream. I, I was just saying, sharing this on the live the other day, and I told my homeboy that we have the conversation. I said, man, the, the lottery right now, over $400 million. If you hit the lottery for $400 million, what would you be doing? He said, man, I'd be doing this. I'd quit my job. I'd do this. I'd do that. I'd be doing this. I'd be doing that. He said, what would you be doing? I said, the same thing I'm doing today. The exact same thing I'm doing today. The exact same thing what I'm doing today. It would be no freaking difference. Why not? Because I'm doing what I want to do. I'm doing what I want to do. Because I took the time to dream. I love the life I live and I live the life I love. When I was doing all that dreaming, y'all want to know what my dream was? My dream was very simple, very uh, practical, right? My dream was how do I spend more time with my kids and my wife and my brother, my sister, my family, the people that I care about and love the most. That was my dream. But I knew I had bills. I knew I had to figure out how to get these bills situated. So what did I do? When I came out of my dream, man, if I had all the time in the world, I'd just be spending time with my kids and my spouse and my family. When it's time to do, we just do whatever we want to do, where we want to do it, how we want to do it. And that's what we, I ain't got to worry about no bills, all this other stuff. When I came out of my dream, I started researching, how do I generate money in a way where I don't have to trade my time for the money? That was the first thing, because I needed the time to spend with these people that I was talking about, right? I needed the money because I figured I had to pay bills. But it clicked as I was doing my research. Is there a way that I can live a life without having bills? So I figured out how to spend more time with my family and not have to have bills. It made my dream come true. I didn't go pick up a book, three books that somebody told me to go read that didn't work. You've been told those three books all your life. These are the top three books you should read. Has it worked? You still in fear. That's the truth. I can't make that up if I wanted to. But nobody hears that. But then again, some people say pickle tastes better cucumber. <laughs> Dream, y'all. Dream big. Think about your dream. Dream some more. Think about your dream. Then dream some more. And then when you wake up from your dream, start researching how to make your dream happen. Start researching how to make your dream happen. And no matter how scared you are, do it scared. When you finish doing your research on how to make your dream happen, Start taking action. Start taking action, boys and girls. And when you start taking actions from your dream, your life gonna change forever. Your life gonna change forever. Hopefully, y'all picking this stuff up. So look, I know today was a little bit different than normal. I I, I got through a couple of questions here, uh, for the most part. Um, if I didn't ask you a question, one of the people that sent me a DM, I apologize. I thought I did. As far as in the people that, that, that missed the livestock auction, you didn't miss much of anything. They ain't had no service out there, y'all. I ain't had no freaking service. We was in the middle of nowhere. The middle of nowhere. It was crazy. It was an amazing experience, but I was like a fish out of water, y'all. Shout out to the 40 Acres family. Congrats. <coughs> um, you need to figure out what they're doing out there right now. Um, figure out what, what 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 they look at the landowners around you out there in Nevada with them 40 acres. Look at what they're doing around you. And whatever they're doing around you, that might be a good entry point for you. The people that had the land before you, look at what they used the land for. That might be a good entry point for you. Hopefully it works. But y'all, it, it, it was crazy. I ain't understand everything that was going on, but I know they were buying 800 pound cattle for $160. 
I know they were buying 900 pound cows for for 240 bucks. Fellas for a fresh pair of joints. I don't know if ladies' hair costs that much no more. My wife, be, she be buying some expensive hair. For, for a nice manicure and pedicure. And some lashes. <laughs> Y'all, this stuff was cheap. This stuff was cheap. I'm in Georgia. They had some goats out there for $80. I said, how the hell you get a goat for 80 bucks? It was unreal, y'all. Shout out to wholesaling. So it was interesting, y'all. So I'm 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 gonna take I'm 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 gonna go to a couple more because what I realized while I was out there, I was at a land uh, uh, a livestock auction. What I realized as I was out there, they have these auctions all over Georgia, and they, they I'm certain they like that in every state, y'all. They got one up in Sugarloaf. And I was like, in Sugarloaf, they got a livestock auction. This it blew my mind. So I'm going to try to get to some other ones just so I can keep getting the experience before I purchase anything. Because after seeing what I saw yesterday, I can't go up in there and just buy that. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm in there talking about, man, I pay $500 for that, 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 that guy right there. Like, no, nah, it's only 160 Why would you pay 500 <laughs> I'm in there green, y'all. I'm green up in here. So what I'm saying is that when you are afraid to do something, y'all, do it, Skid. So you couldn't put a code in the Cadillac? I know. But I can put it in that 3500 Denali. Uh-oh. Coming soon. I got the Dooley Wheels. We put it in production today, y'all. They building that puppy out. I'm by by the time it's done, it'll be a 2025, 3500 Denali diesel with them dually wheels on it. We're gonna raise about six inches too. You know I'm ignorant. <laughs> I can't afford to buy the business buy. It's a business right off. Why? Because it weighs over 6,000 pounds and it's going to be used 100% for business. <laughs> the milk's gone bad, y'all. The milk's gone bad. So we're going to make this thing happen the way we make it happen with no bitch. We got to make stuff happen, y'all. We got to make some stuff happen, y'all. We trying to get it. Yeah, we're going to do the trailer. That's going to be a part of the business. The business is about all that stuff. Y'all know we got to make this happen, y'all. We also just got a good little deal on a bob can and a, and a tractor, too. The business needed a bob can and a tractor. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. The business needed a bob can and, and a tractor, too. Uh-oh. Ooh, 2024 about to be crazy, y'all. It's about to be crazy, y'all. It's going to get wild out here, y'all. So, here's what I'm going to say to y'all. Be you. Be you. It ain't nobody on this planet that can be you better than you. In order to be number one, you got to be odd. I'm going to say that again for the people in the back. In order for you to be number one, you got to be odd, boys and girls. You got to be. You got to be. <laughs> so we try to make some stuff happen, y'all. 2024 needs to be a great year for everybody. Take the steps that are necessary for you to take the steps. Don't be afraid. And if you are scared, do it scared, y'all. I promise you, your future self will thank you for these things. In the meantime, look, y'all be good. Or y'all have fun being bad. And I'm going to see y'all on the other side of the sun. Peace.